Hey everyone, even if you're not spending every waking hour trying to optimize those Google ad campaigns, you're gonna wanna watch this video because until today, most of you running smart shopping campaigns have adopted the set and forget type strategy. And hey, it's not your fault. Google wants you nice and relaxed, basically in a coma when it comes to campaign optimization. And that's why smart shopping campaigns, it's so easy to set up, but so hard to manage. And just a little secret, Google wants to make more money and that's why they do it. But today we're gonna bust through all that noise and show you how to use smart shopping campaigns in order to maximize returns. And also how to use a different strategy when smart shopping campaigns just aren't cutting it. Ready, let's go. Today, we're talking about smart shopping campaigns, even when no one really wants to talk about smart shopping campaigns. And I feel the reason why no one wants to talk about them is because they feel there's nothing to talk about. <laughs> Wait, what? I mean, we don't get all the same capabilities we used to in standard shopping, and that's to optimize and report on performance. So if everything is now automated by machine learning, then there should be nothing for us to do, right? Well. Actually, that's what we're gonna to discuss today. And our job is to make sure that you are maximizing campaign performance, which to us means retaining as much control while leveraging all the good that comes from your campaigns being smart. So today, we're gonna to cover what smart shopping campaigns are and how they differ from standard shopping, some of the challenges that smart shopping campaigns present, and some scenarios in which you might not use smart shopping campaigns. And then of course, lastly, when you would want to make some smart optimizations, and we'll cover how to make those happen too. So before we get going, please gently click that like button below. And if you are into e-commerce advertising or marketing related videos like this, you wanna see more of them, please, please subscribe. And of course, smash the hell out of that bell to get notified the next time we post any news, tips, or important updates like this one. And I just wanted to mention that we're recently just getting our channel up and going. So when I say your support means a lot, it really, really does, and we really appreciate it. All right, let's jump into it. Smart shopping campaigns have become the default campaign type for shopping in Google Ads. And with integration into platforms like Shopify, you can create a single shopping campaign as a smart campaign by default in Google Ads. And Google's really been pushing the usage of smart shopping campaigns over its predecessor, standard shopping, which by the way, we call those dumb campaigns. Not that they're really, really dumb, it's just by contrast. Anyway, it's in standard campaigns where we had all that capability to get product level performance, such as uh, we could set campaign priorities, we could see campaign search queries, we could set bids at the product level. There was a ton of stuff and it was great because we had so much control. Now we don't have any of that in smart shopping. And so we have to kind of live through that. Disclaimer, we're not bashing smart campaigns because we actually use them all the time. But in many circumstances, smart shopping campaigns, just they don't work so great and they can cause major issues, disruptions, limitations in your advertising campaign performance and revenue. So before we discuss exactly why that all happens, here's how smart shopping campaigns actually work. First, you're gonna to wanna to upload a product feed. Now, often advertisers will upload the entire product catalog straight into Google Merchant Center. And if you do that through Shopify, it kind of works the same way. It goes through Content API and it spits out a single smart shopping campaign in Google Ads. Now, once you do that, you set a bid strategy. Traditionally, that's target CPA, target ROAS, max conversion, max conversion value. That's changing. You're gonna have two bid strategies by the time you watch this video. But once that is done, you just go bake a pie because it takes up to about two weeks for these campaigns to learn how to self-optimize. Now, Google is serving various products at different times and deciding which ones are gonna generate the best performance according to your bid strategy goals. Now, there's no queries to monitor, no product level bids to set, and there's also no way for you to see what you paid for for particular product clicks. Now, the idea is that over time, the smart shopping campaigns will be able to learn and sell more effectively than you could in the dumb campaigns. So in many cases, 
This is absolutely true. But here are some exceptions in how smart shopping campaigns can actually suck. Remember when we said that the smart shopping campaigns, they have to learn. Well, it doesn't learn on a per product basis. It's actually learning by analyzing all the products in the campaigns, which ones are searched, which ones are clicked and purchased. And it makes decisions based on the collective data of all the products. So let's just say if a single change happens to a product in the feed, it can have some effect on the product's ability to be served and potentially on the entire campaign, especially if that product was significant to the campaign, um, like it was one of the top converting products. For instance, let's say changes to an individual product in the feed happen because there's a change in availability or price. It could cause a disruption in the campaign's ability to serve its optimal levels for all products because a product that is often served and converts, if it no longer is converting because of a price change or no longer serves because it's out of stock or Google just sees it as a new product, Google has to adjust and deal with the void and conversions from that product. Now this probably should have gone first. The biggest challenge we see with smart shopping campaigns is when the campaign undergoes a bid strategy change. And the entire campaign, when this happens, it can be, it's gonna be disrupted. It's gonna have to learn while it adjusts to the new goals. So talk about watching paint dry. Every time you wanna change a bid strategy goal, you gotta kind of wait it out or expect something big to happen in the campaigns in terms of performance changes. Also, if campaigns don't have enough data, they can take forever to optimize, even when it's done learning. So for instance, campaigns with, let's say, small budgets relative to the amount of products in them, they won't optimize fast and sometimes might struggle to even serve ads. So with little ability to manage these campaigns, the need to have reporting and product segmentation, it's even more crucial. But this is, it's usually limited by the quality of the feed, particularly what is in the feed for values for product types, brand, custom labels, um, Google product categories, uh, description, which are used to segment product groups in a, in a shopping campaign. So um, if these fields are void of useful data, creating meaningful product groups, it's gonna be difficult to do, which means there's less indication into what types of products are performing and need emphasis or de-emphasis in campaign spending. And then bid strategies don't work exactly the way you'd expect. This is where experience comes into play a little bit. If you have a new campaign and let's say you need to get impressions for the very first time, you might set a ROAS goal of 100% just to get impressions and adjust it to something more realistic as data comes in and the learning in the campaign takes place. I mean, obviously 100% uh, ROAS as a goal is not profitable, but it may be needed to ramp campaigns up for the first time, uh, or if it's, they're just flatline for some reason and you can't get them going. So often we'll uh, just set the targets outside of the actual goal. I just used 100% as, a, as a, an example, uh, but once it starts um, looking alive, will adjust, adjust it to something more realistic. The bottom line is that we use smart shopping campaigns all the time. Most of the time campaigns with a reasonable product count where there is little fluctuation in the product data and there's enough budget to support the campaign learning, smart shopping campaigns will outperform dumb campaigns almost every time. And significantly, it's not a, a little bit better, it's a lot better, but and it's a big but, when we don't have the perfect set of circumstances, which is often, almost always, some degree of optimization intervention is required to maximize returns. And that's what we're gonna cover next. So one of the common ways people try to optimize smart shopping campaigns is by segmenting them. And uh, we do a lot of that too. When we segment campaigns, we're doing so because we want to be able to control either budget or maybe a, uh, a bidding strategy separately and differently uh, between the different campaigns. And so when we're looking at that ability, we are looking at several dimensions in which we might need that control. And one of them is product performance. So 
if we have, let's say, top performers and we want them to uh, have their own budget and we want them to have plenty of it, um, then we might put it in its own campaign and give it its own budget. Uh, conversely, if let's say we have uh, products that poorly perform, we might put it in its own campaign and try and suppress it or exclude it. Um, and then let's just say there's products that we have that we just wanna see if they'll do well. We want them to have more visibility for whatever reason, we can carve them out into their own campaign, give them their own budget, their own bidding strategy, and see how they do. Another reason why we might segment products into different campaigns is because of price. So for instance, let's say you have a product catalog and 10 or 20% of that product uh, product catalog, the products are below $10 or $20. And you find that uh, the transactions tend to uh, equate to very low dollar amounts, you might want to suppress uh, those products and, and keep them out of uh, your, your campaigns. And then the last thing is margin. If you know that you have very high margin, you might wanna put it in its own campaign, give it a lot of budget. If you have products that have very low margins, you might wanna suppress those products. The opposite of campaign segmentation is another thing that we do a lot of, it's uh, campaign consolidation. And typically we do this when we get a campaign from an advertiser or we inherit it from another agency. And this is where we see lots of campaigns, uh, typically in an account with very little budget per campaign. And basically we don't want to set up or have campaigns filled with lots of highly searched products and give it a small budget, like a 10 or $20 a day budget, because it would take forever for the campaigns to uh, get enough data and learn the optimal level to serve all of the products. Most advertisers are creating some group of products within the campaign in order to leverage better reporting between each group of products. Now, in order to do that, we need to have the ability to segment products based on differentiating values in the product feed. In other words, we need granularity in the product feed to create product groups in the campaigns. And if we cannot get enough of these differentiating values in the product feed to create segmentations, we would try to optimize the feed in some way. So for instance, let's say all the products in your store have the same product type, let's call it for something general, uh, outdoor equipment, super general. We might try to either edit the product type or add some different values for custom labels so that we can group products more specifically, such as um, hiking or camping or fishing or um, running, <laughs> just thinking of some outdoorsy things. Um, but this is also how we would create campaign segments that we need. So feed optimization is super important and we could do a whole blog post just about feed optimization. This is just one uh, reason why you would optimize the feed to uh, support smart shopping campaigns. Now, the last optimization tip we have for you for smart shopping campaigns is actually to not use smart shopping campaigns. And there's reasons to do this. Uh, sometimes if smart shopping campaigns aren't working, it helps to try uh, the standard campaigns. And so if, let's say there were a, a larger set of products which update constantly in the feed, uh, such as for availability status, or if you put new products in there a lot, we might flag those if, if we don't see them performing in the smart shopping campaign and have them set up in the standard shopping campaign. And this campaign might be bid up to compete with smart uh, shopping, but if for any reason, Google did not wanna serve the products in the smart campaign or the smart shopping campaign, the standard one would pick it up right away. In the end, smart shopping campaigns are actually really great because they are much more capable of analyzing all your products and serving the right ones at the right times to maximize your campaign goals. But simply setting up a smart shopping campaign and forgetting about it is usually not the most profitable way to use them. And of course, there's the learning thing. And the campaigns won't run optimally if you are constantly changing the product data or the bidding strategies. And in those instances, you need a solid plan to get those products in front of your customers on a more frequent and consistent basis. And most of all, with smart shopping campaigns, you need a lot of patience because they don't materialize as fast as we like them, and of course, not as fast as standard campaigns. But with proper campaign optimization and with solid feed data, smart shopping campaigns can make you a lot 
a lot of money. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel to get more videos like this. And if any of you want to book a free strategy session with me, please feel free to go to conversiondiet.com and contact us to set something up. And while you are there, visit our giant upper hand page at the top to see our weekly tips, strategies, and industry updates on everything marketing and e-commerce related. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.